So this is where we started. And I have a better picture of this right here. And this is where we are at now. Guys, it was a long, long transition to get to this. And uh, a lot of work, a lot of help from a lot of friends. And so I do, I wanna show you how I built this and all the process that I went through so that you can do one for yourself. There's a lot that goes on to making sure that the panel is perfect the first time. We'll get into all of that, but first let me show you my panel, how it functions, and why I built it the way that I built it. I don't think I've ever given you guys a full panel tour. I've kind of just talked about what's inside of here. Hi, me. I wanted this to flow in a very special and unique way to make it easy for me to be able to do stuff. So first and foremost, put all of my switches over here and I set them up in such a way that when it's time to shut down the airplane, I can just go bloop and everything turns off. That's my check right there. Same thing with these all right here. I can just run my hand across them and make sure all of these are turned off. I got all of my uh, circuit breakers down here so that they're easy to see. I can tell if they pop and uh, again, easy to just check and do things with. And then over here, I have all of the stuff that I need to be able to um, manipulate controls and things. I recognize I'm going to be using my right hand mostly to do that and I'm going to be flying with my left hand down here. So it made sense to actually move these controls over, but there's a different reason for that that I'll get into a bit later and now everything is you know easily accessible by my right hand changing my hand with the camera here you can see that i can do all of the things that i need to with my right hand with ease so uh, flying with the left hand just made sense to me but let's get all of this stuff started up so we start with the master switch that will turn on everything up to right here so i have like my, my beacon my landing light my strobe my wigwag all of those functions will work up to right here on my fuse panel. Next, uh, we can go with our avionics on. And you see that turned on our little backup right here, as well as our radio and transponder. I can turn this guy on. I have this set up right now the way that I actually like and I'm gonna be flying with. So you can see we already acquired the information from the eye level autopilot, and we're getting GPS information showing us where we are inside of four flight. And this works beautifully. Um, the flow, everything that is here is exactly how I want it to be. Moving back over here, um, you know, we, uh, for startup, we have our alternator switch. I can go mag one and two on. This is my boost pump, which actually sits down here in between my feet. So I have to turn the fuel on at one side. I have also a both position and a right. And I just flip this. And hear that guy down there i only put it on for about three seconds that's all i need and then i can come up here and i have my push to start button and uh, everything here all of these are the proper amperage for the things that they control including the start button this is a 20 amp start button because that is what's called for inside of the documentation down over here i have a couple more switches this is for the autopilot which is also controlled by this guy right here which you know are the oh, the trim tabs that you can see behind that little yellow guy up over there. Um, there's one on the elevator that makes it so that I can control with a little roll right here uh, the actual trim of the airplane. So even though I have this main one right down here, I'm able to control it electronically. They're small enough that they're easy to override inside of a situation. I have a quick disconnect for it button up here. I have an autopilot disengage connect disconnect right there and this is literally a physical disconnect to those server servos so during takeoff and landing i can turn them off so that there's no problems with accidental run away uh, trim tabs this little guy uh, this is an older version of their product that did not stand up well inside of the inside of the heat i have a new one of these it is supposed to be able to do that i just have not installed it yet but then we have our usb and then up over here we have our trig radio which is perfect i love this thing it's easy to tune works perfectly i can monitor uh, stations it's it's absolutely wonderful and then our trig transponder just this little tiny guy working alongside that the engine information system from grt and that actually shows up over here on the eye level app as well so oops accidentally opened that uh, so this is my entire panel it 
flows and it functions the way that I want it to flow and function. And it's a custom panel that I basically set up for myself. And I'm very happy with it. Flying with it, the few hours that I've had have been absolutely perfect. And I don't think I would have set this up any other way. Well, actually, if I did set this up in another way, I probably would have moved these items over to here and these guys over to here. Um, that way I could fly more traditionally with the left hand on the power, but still have access to all of the avionics and things that are over here. But you know, I'm more, I'm better with my right hand. So it just made sense to do this. Yes, I could train and get it the other way, but it's just how things ended up. So again, how easy is it to just, there we go. That's my double check. Everything is down. All of these are off. You can see the autopilot disconnected, the eye level autopilot disconnected, and uh, everything is going to shut down in just a few seconds. So uh, yeah, again, really happy with this, this design and it works perfectly for me. All right, so now to answer the real question of how do we go from this to what's inside of the plane now? And uh, it all starts with basically your avionics. What do you want to put inside of the airplane? For me, I spent a lot of time at OSH working with vendors and sponsors to be able to get a lot of the avionics and things that you see inside of the airplane today, which is why when I was going through and showing you guys things, I was, I was talking a lot about those individuals, Trig and uh, iLevel being two of those biggest sponsors, which we're still very, very grateful for. But you have to know what you're putting in your panel before you start to design it. And there are some great services out there, which I hope to be working with one soon when we redo the panel inside of the Archer. But for me, I was doing this all out of the box, all on my own and doing something absolutely custom because there wasn't anything out there for me to work with purely because nobody's put a panel like this inside of a J3 Cub before. So there was no designs, no measurements, no nothing. I had to do everything on my own. So the first thing that I had to do was move away from this curve that you see on this to a flat panel. And that started with the top of the airplane, the, the boot cowling. So I talked about this in some of my videos, but this boot cowling used to be all one piece. And I went ahead and decided to cut it along right here. I usually have a piece of rubber right here, but I was doing something with some things underneath this. But you can see up here, it's a little bit different. And what I had to do was create a piece of metal that actually starts just underneath the windscreen right here and extends straight out so that we could have a flat panel. And it worked perfectly. Uh, I followed some of the template that was on the original one and put screws in where I needed it to be. And then I was able to mock up a panel using some cardboard. And that worked really well. I was able to get all the avionics and kind of get them in places where I had wanted to put them. And that allowed me to move on to something else. And that something else is this foam board. You can get this at the dollar store, well, the dollar 25 store now, but uh, dollar 25 for one of these, it's like a two and a half by three foot sheet. And I did a lot of templates throughout the airplane with this material right here. And it works great. And so you can see uh, everything was laid out and here's a picture of it with all the avionics inside of it. I truly went the extra mile to make sure that this was going to be everything that I wanted it to be. I also drew on this where there was a bar because there was, there's a bar behind the avionics panel that you can't put avionics there. So we needed to make sure, or I needed to make sure when I was doing this, that I wasn't going to run into anything. Now, second to that, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I made a whole video on this one with uh, x Knot. I actually broke <laughs> the product that they sent me. But you can see I had to do a weird cutout instead of here to make that work. And I'm really, really happy that I did because of the cooling capacity that that unit actually has. But again, this is the mock-up. You can see where the outline for those things are. And I got everything fit up inside of here. Anyways, I have a buddy with a CNC router. And uh, knowing that, I'm like, hey, can you help me cut this out of metal? He's like, yeah, we can cut it out of metal. So I sent him over basically this, and I actually met with him on it. And he was able to take this and other measurements and things that I had and put that all into a CAD program and come up with this. And we actually had a couple of different versions of it. And in the end, everything looked perfect. And so we went ahead and decided to cut. And oh my gosh, was it cool to watch. 
and very, very loud. Um, I won't let you guys listen to that very much longer, but uh, it, it cut everything out and then we were able to etch on every single label so that the panel looked absolutely incredible inside of the end. But it did come out inside of this big rectangular sheet. And so I had to cut that down myself and uh, get that nice curve on it. But again, this guy right here, I already had that curve based off of the panel that was in there and I was able to cut it up and make it absolutely perfect. So all of that went absolutely perfectly. And uh, in the end, I was very happy with how it turned out, but I made a mistake, two of them actually. One of those mistakes being I forgot to include the alternator field wire, which is why I had to put the labels inside of the airplane here to add the switch, move my avionics master switch and add it the circuit breaker for that field. It, it all worked out inside of the end, but I don't have those beautifully etched lettering above them. I just have these stickers. I have a solution for that long term, which I may or may not do based off of something I let everyone know about at Osh this year. I'll, I'll leave a link down into that video so you guys can check that out. But it has some major, major news about the Red Rocket. The second thing was the ELT switch. And there's a lot of people who put that not just on the panel, but like up on the wing, you know, somewhere inside of there, somewhere outside the cockpit. But I wanted it right in front of me in case I needed to toggle that inside of flight during an emergency. So uh, I, I put that down on the panel and it, it looks great. It works exactly like I wanted to. Now let's talk about those throttle cables. That was another unforeseen thing for me. And the story behind that was um, I needed a custom cable for what I have set up inside of the engine. And that cable was gonna cost me a lot of money that I didn't have at the time. And so I ordered those cables from Vans because I'm using a Vans throttle cable mount on the engine. But I couldn't get those to go on the left side where the traditional throttle is for a Cub. And I'd already talked about using everything with my right hand because that's how I'm, I'm used to flying. And so it made sense for me to make a cover panel to go over my passenger warning, which actually really hurt my heart because it was so beautifully etched in. But uh, I put that cover over it and then put the control cables there. And that has worked wonderfully for me. And what did I do on the other side where the throttle used to be? I actually made a 3D printed cover that goes over it where my uh, headphone jacks and stuff are. And that's worked really, really well inside of the airplane. So I'm actually happy with those decisions thus far. And uh, I look forward to being able to fly the airplane with it you know, that way. It's, it's convenient and it works again for me. So I know that was probably a lot and very, very quick. I can tell you that the design, the implementation, the, the working, the thought process throughout all of this took a lot more time than I thought that it was going to. But that's probably where services and companies who cut panels come into play. They, they actually have kind of a checklist to go through the make you think of all the parts that you're going to put inside of it and just make sure that things are set up and done properly before you cut. But again, because I'm so custom over here and my panel design, even adjusting the boot cowling, nobody could help me with this. It was something that I had to do on my own. So hopefully you're not in the same position that I am and you can get some help or suggestions from other people and make something that is truly custom to you and the way that you want to set up your plane. All right, guys, editing Carl here. I forgot to mention like the installation of all of these products. And the reason I didn't discuss that is because I made a video on installing every single one of them and putting them inside of the panel. I'll have links down inside of the description to every single one of those videos so you can check out each of the components individually. But uh, yeah, let's get back to it. Anyways, if you guys have any more questions about what I chose, why I put it there or anything, please put it down inside of the, uh, the comment section. I'd be happy to answer those for you. And uh, that's gonna be it for this video. So as always, share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.